Way back in March, when the pandemic first reared its ugly head, I, along with many others, had to self-isolate. So with great enthusiasm, I set out to do some of the jobs that I had kept meaning to do for ages, but always seemed to find a good excuse for not actually getting round to doing them. Things like sorting out cupboards throughout the house, washing paintwork instead of just a quick dust, all sorts of good intentions. And I'd like to report that now I have one of the tidiest, cleanest homes imaginable. But unfortunately, that initial burst of enthusiasm didn't last too long. All I seem to have now is one spare room and one garage filled with boxes full of things that I have no idea as to what I should do with them. One job that is still a work in progress is sorting out the many, many books that I have accumulated over the years. I find it really difficult to throw them out and I must admit that I often like to reread some of them. Some bringing back much loved memories of places and peoples and events that we have enjoyed in our family. One day, a couple of weeks ago, I came across a book entitled Thought for the Day, written by a former Bishop of Bath and Wells, Bishop Jim Thompson. He had been given a five minute daily slot on a radio program called Today, which some of you may remember. The book contains some of those thoughts, some dating back to 20 years or more. Oh, this is well out of date, I thought. And so I went to put it on the pile for throwing out. But I was tempted to open it. And whilst enjoying a cup of coffee, I started to glance through it. Surprise, surprise. Several of them were still relevant to what of much of what is happening in our world today, showing that some things never change. One such talk of his took me back to a time last year when I went into Warrington on the bus. The article I was reading was entitled Mobile Phone Rage. And I was sitting next to a gentleman who received a call on his mobile phone. He then proceeded to hold a loud conversation, which lasted the whole of the journey into the bus station. Had there been a spare seat somewhere, somewhere else in the bus, I would have moved away, but no such luck. So I sat there, just getting more and more irritated. And so I could empathize with Bishop Jim because this is what he said had happened to him. He said, the other morning, I settled into my seat on the train with a wad of papers to read. 10 seats away, a businessman got on his mobile phone and started to ring his colleagues one by one about their company's financial crisis. And for most of the two hours, he continued with this loud penetrating conversation he spent the whole time looking out of the windows, so he never saw the faces of his fellow passengers. I almost wish I had a mobile phone to ring him up and tell him exactly what I thought, or perhaps even to ring whatever company it is who put out those seductive adverts for train travel. Enjoy a quiet game of chess, or perhaps even a gentle nap. This gentleman must have been in a private world of his own, totally impervious, insensitive to the effect he was having on his fellow travellers. We are rightly protective of personal privacy and individual freedom, but there are examples of what is claimed as privacy, which in fact hurt the wider community. Think of the person who smokes and doesn't only risk his or her own health, but may, have, may involve others in passive smoking, causing long-term grief and running up huge medical bills. Our private behavior can have more knock-on effects than we imagine. Our anger, our envy, as well as our aerosols. Our use of our cars can pollute the communal atmosphere. 
Sometimes it is claimed that religion is just a private matter. It must, of course, be a personal belief, but all the main faiths demand a strong responsibility to the community, to the community in which we belong. We are not just individuals, but rather people in relationships. St. Paul said, each of us must consider his neighbor and think what is good and will build up the common life. We are made by God for freedom, but not in such a way to infringe the freedom of others. And Bishop Jim finishes by saying that although mobile phones are a very helpful technology, their intrusion into the space of others does not help to build up our common life. I found it interesting that Bishop Jim mentioned something that is still being discussed and some small steps are being now taken to tackle the problem of caring for our planet. That thought for the day was broadcast way back in July 1997, some 23 years ago. And we are now only just beginning to realize that urgent action needs to be taken in order that the world that God created will survive. We are going through difficult times, being urged to adhere to the many restrictions which make life hard on a daily basis for many people. On the news last week, however, there was a lady in her late 70s and she was being interviewed. And in no uncertain terms, and at times using very strong language, she said that nobody was going to tell her what she could and couldn't do. I will do what I like, and if I get the virus, so be it. I could understand in a way her feelings, but it brought to mind an expression that I heard once on a course that I was on. We all have rights, but with those rights goes responsibility. That lady was at the point only thinking of herself and not even considering the safety and well-being of those around her. So in spite of our fears, our anxieties, our fed upness, let us remember that we all have a responsibility to think and care for those around us, as I am sure we all try to do. And so a prayer. Lord Jesus, be with us all today as we go about our daily work, that we will be mindful and caring of all those we know and meet. Help us to distinguish between what we know to be our rights and to be aware of our responsibilities. Please forgive us when we act with little or no thought as to how our words and actions have caused hurt or distress to others around. Help us to remember that you are able to make all things new and that all situations and words are known to you. And so we give everything into your loving hands. Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. And so may God bless us and keep us always. And until we meet again, take care and keep safe. Love and God bless.